last week, we were in Acts chapter 17, and, and as we were in Acts chapter 17, when we left off in Acts chapter 17, if you, if you come here, most of the time that I share, I'm going through the scriptures, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, trusting that the Holy Spirit is going to give us some, some insight as to what He wants for our lives right now. And so as I begin, the t we, we learn a little bit about what the scripture says, we want to apply it to our lives today. And so last week, we left Paul. He was in Athens, and Paul had gone to a place where, the, where he was actually um, um, sharing a, the unknown God, talking to these guys. Remember we went through, we saw all these, uh, these uh, temples and, and uh, shrines that were in, in Athens. And he came to a place where there was an unknown God. And the unknown God was, this, was who he was telling these guys about. He wanted to tell them about God. And so, anyways, he goes in and we, we kind of went over that. And then, and then this week, he travels to the city of Corinth. And in the city of Corinth, there is a goddess. And the goddess name is uh, Aphrodite. And in, this, in the city of Corinth, there's over a thousand priest, priestess in that city. And the passage it goes along, and these guys and these priestess that were, were in the city of in, in Corinth, there was this place, a horrible, horrible place. So many things going on. I was heard, listening to a, a, um, a uh, teaching from another pastor that taught this. I just, as I was going through, listening to commentaries and looking at some things. The pastor described Corinthians as a combination of Hollywood, a combination of, of um, Las Vegas, and a combination of, of uh, what was the other city? This Las Vegas, Hollywood, and, and I think I can't think of the other city that he, not New York, it was, an, oh, San Francisco. Just based on all the things. If you know anything about those cities today, you could you get an idea of what Corinth was like. And yeah, in a couple of other cities, because I, there were things that were going on in Corinth. Also, there was like some of the cities, San Bernardino, some of the cities I also grew up in, Compton and Watts. This whole thing, there was a lot of things going on in the city of Corinth. And so here we are. Uh, the Apostle Paul, when he's writing to the church in Rome, he even describes some of the things that were going on in the church of, of Corinth. And uh, in, a, in Romans chapter 1, he talked about some of the things he, he described that were going on. He said in, in verse 28, he says, since they, since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wicked, wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarrelings, deceptions, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning, and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand. They break their promises. They are heartless. They have no mercy. They know God's God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die, yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them. Paul, when he was writing this, he was writing to the church of Rome, but he was describing what was going on in Corinth, where he was. It was a bad place. In Acts chapter 1, verse 1, it says, And Paul left Athens and went to Corinth, and it says in uh, verse 2, it says, There he became acquainted with a Jew named Aquila, born in Pontius, who lived, who recently arrived from Italy with his wife, Priscilla. They had left Italy when Claudius Caesar deported all the Jews from Rome. Give you an idea. I just want to give you something, just something I added this week. On the back side of your paper there, there's a little map. And in that map, you're going to see some things. Those are all the places that Paul traveled to. And as I'm going to mention later on, but in case I forget, all those places happen between verses 18 and verses 23 
in this passage that we're reading today. Over 1,500 miles traveled by Paul in a short period of time in, uh, in, by boat and, and by land. Do you see that area of Macedonia there in the area of Asia? And there's a body of water above that, and that's the Black Sea. And the Black Sea there is where this guy, Aquila, was born. Just to give you an idea of, of where you're at and what's going on, this is a portion of, of the, the area that Paul was in. And it says, and each Sabbath found Paul at the synagogue trying to convince the Jews and Greeks alike. And I like this again. We turn back to Paul again. As I was thinking about this, and I may say this several times, but I thought about the life of Paul as I was going, and I was actually getting encouraged by Paul because sometimes in ministry, it can be such a discouragement. When you have a, a purpose that God's placed in your heart and you want to see things change and the lives of people change, and, and actually your own life can at times can be a disappointment. This week, I went through a, I, what I call a life crash as I began to examine my own life. And I thought, ooh. And I was just going through some of those things. And, and the only thing that I could think of at the end of it is, thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers our sins. See, some of you, well, hey, yeah, thank God you don't know <laughs> about, what, about some of the things I've gone through. But the thing is, and I'm sure everyone here may have had some things, if you're honest with yourself that you were, and I'm like, man, but you covered that. But as I was looking at these, all these things, I was thinking about the Apostle Paul who had a life similar to mine in his own way because the Apostle Paul at one time was a killer of Christians. Yep. And in some places they didn't, they were against him because he, when he was preaching at this time, but others probably, even though the scripture doesn't say it, probably threw it in his face. Who are you to tell us about Jesus giving your past life? And that's what kept Paul, I believe, humble. That may have been, oddly enough, his thorn in the flesh. Yeah. It's the reason why all I come to do and say is, hey, thus saith the Lord. And, and I, don't, I never come in judgment or do my best not to. To judge because knowing judgment is only by God, but looking at my life, I'm rightly judged by what went on. The Apostle Paul, I love this about him because he not only went, he went from city to city to city. When he when he got to the argument with Barnabas, he he and Barnabas had a plan. Paul said, let's go back to all the churches that we've been a part of, all the churches that we have planted. Let's go back and check on all these churches. And so that's what Paul, this is what he's doing on that map that you see. Those are all the places that he went to on the on back over 1,500 miles destined to finish up in Jerusalem. And he didn't care who he talked to. He talked to every race. Last week we called him in Athens. He was talking to people. And I wonder why he, he, he didn't stay there long. As we're going to see in a little bit, he left. He told Timothy and Silas to hurry up and, and meet him in Athens. But he decided not to wait for them. He went on to Corinth. And I believe my own doesn't say this anywhere, but one of the reasons why is that it is the most difficult time that you have when you're sharing the, the gospel of Christ in an area where every time you, almost every time you share it, there's somebody that just says, I don't want to hear it. You remember Jesus, he had this parable, the sower and the, and the seed. And he said, he goes in and he said, in one place, the seed fell on the wayside. And later he describes that seed as seed that as soon as the seed hits, the seed being the word of God, as soon as it hits, the wayside, by the way, being the hard heart, as soon as the seed hits the ground, the Bible says that the birds of the air came and ate the seeds. In other words, the ground did not receive the seeds, the hard heart. And I believe that's why Paul had to get out of Athens. He came in, he did what he had to do. He came in and preached the word of God in Athens. He shared with everybody. He went against the philosophers and said, okay, it's my turn. Let me tell you about Jesus. And when they said, most of them said, hey, you know, we, we have our own way of thinking. Come back and talk to us another day. Paul just said, I got to get out of here. All the idols that we talked about last week and how the idols can affect us. But he went to the synagogue every day and he, 
And when he, that's what they were finding. And in verse 5 again, it says, and After Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul spent all his time preaching the word. He testified to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. Here's the thing that I try to remember all the time. And if I can, at some point, you might come back and I heard him talking about that last time I was here. But I believe that this is a powerful passage of scripture. In Romans 1.16, here's what it says. It says, for I, Paul says this, as he's writing to the church of Rome, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. That's the New King James Version. The New Living Translation says it, says it like this, for I'm not ashamed of the good news about Christ, it is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. See, Paul went into the place, and whenever he went to a place, he shared who Jesus was. He shared about Jesus being the, the Messiah, the promised one coming. At some point, every place in Scripture points back to Jesus. At some point, you should hear it, and we need to hear it over and over again and have our hearts massaged with that. So when it, whenever we're going through, through something, we can turn back to that, and we can thank God for that, as I wish the other day. I mean, I, again, I had a, a, a flashback for life of my life. It was like that flashback that I imagine is going to happen at death when the, when the curtain is played and it said, this is your life. And I was thinking about it. I only got a portion of it. And it's not made for TV. It's just that bad. But I had the, the gospel. The Messiah came to me. And someone shared the good news with me. And so over and over again, we need to, to hear this. Verse 8 says, but when they, verse 6 says, but when they opposed and insulted him, Paul shook the dust from his clothes and said, your blood is upon your own heads. I'm innocent. From now on, I will preach to the Gentiles. And I love that because there comes a point. Here's what we have to remember, and I say this to you. This may help some of you because as I was studying this, and, and we'll get more into this next week, but as I was studying and looking at Acts chapter 18 and Acts chapter 19, there comes a, the subject about what the Holy Spirit being, not in us, but the upon effect of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit comes in us when we give our life to Christ, but the upon effect is what people talk about. That's when people say, hey, you got the evidence of the Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues. Uh, that's cool. But I like, you know, what Paul said to the church. He says, you want to see a better evidence of it? The love of God in you. That's the better evidence. That's probably the best. And he also said, hey, also, you ought to be able to prophesy. You know, in other words, herald forth the word of God. You know why? Because that's going to help somebody. And so what Paul was trying to do with what God had given him, God gave him a direct order. When he, when he, had, when he was blinded and he could see, he's, God had already spoken to him. Now you're going to go out and you're going to be used and you're going to go through some stuff. And Paul goes out, and every place he goes, he's going to the synagogue to tell the Jews who should know about Christ coming. The word, their word told them, the, every, all their writings told them about him coming. And then he would go to the Gentiles who knew nothing about him, and their heart was even more open to them. And Paul would share about the Messiah. He would go in, full guns, sharing about them. And this is what he's, he's doing here. But when they turned their back on him, he said, okay, I've done what I was supposed to do. Now your blood be on you. See, the thing I can do is I can sleep well at night because I'm not sharing any, any kind of weird stuff with anybody. I'm not, you know, focus on me, come like me, come do this for me. This church is not here for me. It's for us. And, I, and that's the way God has ordained it. Everyone that comes and serves and helps, it's for us. And so Paul Shared, hey, you know what? Your blood is on you. And they're, like I, I um, share with some of my children, I share with them, I said, there comes a day of accountability where you're responsible for your own self. Even if I did not do everything I needed to do to the best of my ability, I still threw out seed. And by the, the Bible promises that God waters. It's God that gives the increase. Every week, guess what? When I come here, there's seed going out. 
things that God shared. It's easy because I'm sharing his word. Seed goes out. Some of you guys may have already got some used to seed. Like you said, I heard this story before. I heard this story several times. Well, then there's watering, and I'm watering that seed. But there's one person that gives the increase, and that's God. And God gives the increase to the heart that's open. Not the hard heart, but the heart that's open to him. And that's what he's looking for. This is what Paul was talking about here. It says in verse 7, then he left and he went to the home of uh, Titus uh, Justice, a Gentile who worshiped God and who lived next door to the synagogue. I love Paul. He said, okay, you guys don't want to listen? I'll go next door. And he went next door and he preached the word of God. That's awesome. I love it. God opens up doors in other places where we can hear. In verse 8, Christmas, the leader of the synagogue and everyone in his household believed the Lord. Many others in Corinth also heard them, heard Paul became believers and were baptized. One night the Lord, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision and told him, don't be afraid, speak out. Don't be silent, for I am with you. And no one will attack or harm you, for many people in this city belong to you. I wonder why Paul, maybe you might be able to answer this is along with me. Why did God tell Paul not to be afraid? Yeah, that's right, Tim. Because he was. God knew the right of Paul. And I'm like Paul, and I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not standing here any kind of brave man. I'm a lot worse. I, I don't know if I could have stood to be there. Here we got, we went back to Acts chapter 16 a few weeks ago, a month or so ago when we were teaching that. And in Acts chapter 16, what happened to Paul? He and Silas were beat. And they were thrown into the depths of the dungeon. In this very city, bleeding and, and hurting, 30, at least 39 stripes on their back. Paul had been left for dead before. And now he was getting ready, as he was sharing, he could feel the uproar, the same thing is happening. He's like, oh no, well, oh no, here it comes again. I may have told the story before, my, my younger brother, some years ago, um, found out he had an anomaly with his heart. And when they installed the, a pacemaker, in his heart, they also saw a defibrillator to kickstart his heart when it happened. But there was something wrong with the defibrillator. So after they put it in, it would just kind of go off like whenever it wanted to. And I remember one day, we, I had a, we had a business. We had a, a mortgage business. We worked at together. And I looked at him. He's in the corner, crouched in the corner, in his suit. We are all, yes, the way we had the dress back there, wearing suits. I was like, what? brother, what's wrong? Eyes wide open. He says this. It's coming, it's coming. I go, what, what's coming, what's coming? He goes, I can feel the defibrillator is going off, going to get ready to go off. I go, what does it feel like? He says, a horse turned his back on you and kicking you with both of his hind legs. And it would just do it sometimes two, three, four times. That's what this is like. That's what this reminds me of. Paul was at fear, like here it comes again. I'm preaching the word of God, it's going to. And God said, wait a minute. And the only thing that ever brings comfort, because I actually thought to myself, is every almost every time I read this passage of the scripture for my own, I think, well, God, how come Paul had to go through so much? Why why'd you let him uh, be be? But here was Paul who said to me, and this is where I I, I, I look up to Paul. Paul said, I'm you no, know, and several times said, I'm going to lay down my life for the gospel. But Paul was comforted this time because he knows if he got a word from God, don't worry, it's good. He had never heard it before. Imagine if you, as a Christian, you thought that every time if I, if I share the word of God because I'm a good person, because I'm on the right track now, everybody's going to like me, I'm going to do, no. I don't, I'm not dependent on God, am I? Really? And the Bible says, you know what, we're going to go through persecution. The Bible tells us that. But this time, Paul got a break from God. He said, hey, God said, hey, I'm going to be with you. Um, verse 11, Paul stayed there for the next year and a half, teaching the word of God. When Gallo became, Gallio became the governor of Acacia, some of the Jews rose up together against Paul and brought him before the government for judgment. They accuse Paul of persecuting and persuading people to worship God in ways that are contrary to the law. But just as Paul started to make his defense, Galileo turned to Paul's accusers and said, Listen, you Jews, 
If this were a case of involving some wrongdoing or some serious crime, I would have a reason to accept your case. But it's, since it is merely a question of words and names, and your Jewish law, take care of it yourself. I refuse to judge such matters. Then he threw them out of the courtroom. With a break, God gave Paul right there. Verse 17, and the crowd then grabbed Suthanes, the leader of the synagogue, and beat him right there in the courtroom. But Galileo paid no attention. Paul stayed at Corinth for some time after that and then said goodbye to his brothers and sisters and went to nearby Chinria. Uh, and then he shaved his head according to Jewish customs, marking the end of the vow. And he set sail for Syria, taking Priscilla and Aquila with him. So you see that right there in verse uh, seven, that 17, you can just, like I said, on the back, at verse 18, I'm sorry, on the back of your map, you can see how close those cities from Corinth to Chinria were. <clears throat> Since then they stopped at the first port of Ephesus where Paul left the others behind while he was there. And he went to the synagogue to reason with the Jews. They asked him to stay longer, but he declined. As he left, however, he said, I will come back later, God willing. And then he set sail for, for Ephesus. Two things. In verse 19, it says he left others behind. So he's, taken, he's talking about Aquila and Priscilla and some of those others that were with them. And you, we're going to see why the, I believe the Lord had him leave Priscilla and Aquila behind you know, to minister to others. You know, you want to spread things out. And a lot of times in churches, you know, I see, uh, and we love to have those to, to build up a church. We want to have everyone stay right here. But here was a cool thing. Can you imagine if everyone, we, we took hold to the word of God that we're going through right now, and it got in our hearts, and it changed us. And all of a sudden, we're going out, and we're sharing the word of God in other places. We're sharing what we have. We're sharing the, the blessings, the things that we've learned. We're out praying for people. There's some people here that go out, um, and they take, they sing at places, they go out and take food to other places. They're doing, I remember, I got pictures from some of them uh, here in times past, going out. Some people in our church right here just did it on their own, led of the Lord to do that. And what a great thing that is to be able to do. And then Paul says something interesting in verse 21, and I wanted to also bring it to our attention. It's an, op an opportunity just to share something from the Word of God. He says, they went in to stay longer. He said, Paul said, I'll be back. But he said this, I will come back later, God willing. James, in James 4, 14, James says something, something similar. He said, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, he says this, what, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, he says in verse 15, you ought to say if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. James in James 14, or James chapter 4, verses 14 and 15, that's where the reference was. You may want to write that down and look at it another time. In other words, James is saying, you and I, we ought to know if it's the will of God, I'll be here tomorrow. It's by God's will. Anything can change. Anything at all. Verse 22, the next stop in the port of Caesarea. From there, they went up to visit the church at Jerusalem and then went back to Antioch. And after some, spending some time in Antioch, Paul went back through Galatia and Pergia and, and visiting and strengthening all the believers. I love this. And as I said before, he traveled in those few verses from 15 to 18, over 15 to 23, over um, 1,500 miles on foot and by boat. And he went and he did several things. He shared the word of God. And he strengthened the believers. Shared the word of God. Strengthened the believers. You know, I wonder sometimes, and, and you and I, I'll tell you, I've got some great strengthening from some of you. Sometimes there's an encouraging word that comes in. that Just knowing that God, you're strengthening the believers. You're strengthening them in what they are already doing. Them. You're doing for God. You're encouraging them in things that they are doing, how they're using their gifts. You go in and you share things with them in ways they may be able to, to maybe improve their gift. Show them something that you learned in the scripture and encourage it. I remember I used to go as a, as a young believer. I had a man, a guy that would do this, somebody I looked up to at the time, and there were 
maybe 10 of us, all close to around the same age. And we go to these men's conferences with them. And at the, in between the speakers, maybe it'd be a lunch or a dinner, he'd sit down with us and he would ask us questions. What did you get from that? And then, you know, I can remember at times thinking, sometimes maybe affecting those around me by what I shared, but other times I'd share something and then all of a sudden he would share. And it was like a rushing mighty wind. It was just a heavy thing that he had to share and it, it encouraged and strengthened my life and made me want to, to serve God and share the word of God. Verse uh, 24 says, Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, an eloquent speaker who knew the scriptures well, had arrived in Ephesus from uh, Alexandria in Egypt. He had been taught the way of the Lord, and he taught others about Jesus with an enthusiastic spirit, with accuracy. However, he knew only about John's baptism. And when Priscilla and Aquila heard him preaching boldly in the synagogue, they took him aside and explained, the way of God even more accurately. So what is he, what are they saying there? The scripture is saying that he, he got a, he had some head knowledge. He really hadn't heard about Jesus. And so what they what he what they these guys did they explained to him Jesus, the work of the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that gives you and I revelation. And so they that's what helped his teaching to improve. This same Apollos, and, and it's a book that goes along, 